Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'm very happy to have this opportunity to speak about the fairness in House of Commons representation, addressing the significant and increasing underrepresentation of Canadians living in fastest growing provinces in a long standing commitment of our government and our party. First, though, I note that our government's top priority is the economy. We have focused on the mandate Canadians gave us to spur our economic recovery through a low tax plan for jobs and economic growth. In addition to securing our economic recovery, our Conservative government has a long, stable national majority government and a mandate to strengthen and enhance Canada's democratic institutions. In the last election and in previous elections, our party committed to Canadians that we would address representation fairness. First, I'd like to outline the problem we need to fix. The primary motive of Bill C-20, this problem has been mentioned at length during debate, but I believe it warrants underlining again. The representation of the provinces in the House of Commons is readjusted every 10 years using a formula established in Section 51 of the Constitution Act 1867. The current formula dates to 1985 and was designed to provide modest increases to the size of the House. While the 1985 formula has been successful in limiting the size of the House of Commons, it has created a representation gap for the fastest growing provinces of Ontario, British Columbia, and Alberta. It has prevented these provinces from receiving a share of seats that is more in line with their relative share of the population. To illustrate the significance of this representation gap, we look no further than my riding of Bramley Gore Malton in Ontario. Bramley Gore Malton is home to fourth largest number of Canadians in any riding at over 150 to 698 people. I know this population figure was one uh, was as of 2006 census over five years ago. During the la last election, we made three promises to ensure that any update to the formula all allocating House of Commons seats would be fair for all provinces. First, we would increase the number of seats now and in the future to better reflect population growth in British Columbia, Ontario, and Alberta. Second, we would protect the number of seats for smaller provinces. And third, we would protect the propor proportional representation of Quebec according to its population. Our government received a strong mandate to move towards fair representation in the House of Commons, and we're delivering on that commitment with the Fair Representation Act. Bill C-20 moves every single Canadian closer to representation by population. The over 152,000 people in my riding compare to an average national riding size of fewer than 113,000. Only four, four provinces even have an average riding size of over 90,000 people. Ontario is one of those provinces. The greater Toronto area has nine of the ten largest ridings in the country. All of these ridings have over 130,000 people. The largest in Canada, Brampton West, has 170,000 people. My riding and many other others in the greater Toronto area are home to significant and increasing number of new Canadians. New Canadians who tend to settle in large cities with large population ridings are among the most significant Currently, underrepresented Canadians in this country simply by virtue of living in fast-growing communities in fast-growing provinces. Is it fair that new Canadians, many of whom come to our country to enjoy the democratic freedoms light to so many millions of people around the world, and indeed all Canadians living in regions like Bramley or Malton, have a democratic voice that is significantly diminished merely because where their home is located? We believe, no, this is not fair. Every Canadian's vote, to the greatest extent possible, should carry equal weight. If left with the status quo, the representation gap experienced by Canadians living in fast-growing provinces, and in particular those Canadians living in regions like mine, will only grow more prominent. This is a serious problem that requires an immediate solution. Bell C-20 proposes the best formula to address the representation gap without pitting Canadians against Canadians, regions against region. 
This formula is principled and is the reasonable update designed to bring Ontario, British Columbia and Alberta closer to representation by population, while at the same time maintaining the seat counts of low growth provinces and ensuring that Quebec maintains representation that is proportionate to its population. In fact, the Fair Representation Act brings every single Canadian closer to representation by population. The practical result of applying the new formula will add to an additional 30 seats to the House of Commons for a total of 338. In terms of provincial breakdown, Ontario will receive 15 new seats, Alberta will receive six new seats, British Columbia will receive six new seats, Quebec will receive three new seats as a result of being the first beneficiary of the representation rule, which will ensure that its seat, seat total does not become less than what it is proportionate to its population. In my province, Ontario's average riding size down from 126, 160 to 110, 521. Thanks to this legislation, Ontario's percentage of seats in the House of Commons will more closely re reflect its share of Canada's population. This is a great thing for Ontario and indeed great thing for all Canadians. Even more significantly, the bill provides an adjustment to the formula in order to adjust for future increases in population following future censuses. Unlike the formula on the books today, the C20 formula accounts for population growth and trends. This is a good news for all Canadians for both now and into the future. Madam Speaker, to conclude this bill, the Fair Representation Act is a principled, nationally applicable update to formula allocating House of Commons seats. It is reasonable, it is principled, and it is fair for all Canadians. It addresses a problem that needs to be fixed, a problem that will grow worse if we fail to act. It will achieve better representation for Canadians living in fast-growing provinces while maintaining representation for smaller and slow growth provinces. I will say it again, it brings every single Canadian closer to representation by population. The Fair Representation Act delivers on this government's long-standing commitment to the uh, commitment to bring greater fairness in the House of Commons representation. I strongly encourage the opposition to work with us in passing this principled, reasonable re re legislation as quickly as possible. I look forward to continuing my work with all my colleagues in this House to make sure that happens. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Question Madame la Présidente, en 2006, le gouvernement conservateur euh, a reconnu que le Québec formait une nation. Mais aujourd'hui, avec ce projet de loi-là, le gouvernement conservateur est en train de cracher au visage des Québécois et des Québécoises. Donc, c'est très clair que notre position au sein du NPD, par, par rapport à, à 2006, nous, le, le Québec doit garder le, euh, euh, son euh, nombre de sièges historiques dans la Chambre des communes. Donc, ma question est pour euh, mon collègue conservateur. Est-ce que le, le fait que vous avez reconnu que, la, que le Québec forme une nation euh, ne vaut absolument rien à vos yeux? Uh, the Minister of State for Sports. Madam Speaker, our government received a strong mandate to move towards fair representation in the House of Commons. It guarantees Quebec's proportional representation reflects in the number of seats Quebec is gaining. And uh, also this legislation moves every single province towards representation by population. Thank you. Merci, Madame la Présidente. I thank my colleague for his, his speech, but we learned nothing from it and no response to the opposition's arguments. I will repeat them. And I will give him a quote. I would like him to comment the quote. And the quote is, Canadians are, Canadians are already among the most overrepresented people in the world. A smaller house offers considerable cost savings, less government and fewer politicians. And clearly, this is what Canadians want. I would like to know from my colleague if he agrees with this quote. And I hope for him that he will, because it's quoted from his boss. Honorable Minister of State for Sports. Thank you, Madam Speaker, for the question. I thank the Honorable Member. As we said before, I said before, our government received a strong mandate to move towards fair representation in the House of Commons, and this bill guarantees that. This legislation moves every single province towards 
fair representation by proportion. And this legislation, just like the liberal uh, plan, does not pit one province against the other, communities against other communities. It's fair for all Canadians uh, throughout Canada. Thank you, Madam. Comments, uh, the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Health. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker, and I, I want to thank my colleague for his excellent speech. And um, I've been listening to some of the comments back and forth in the House, and one of the things I've heard from the Liberal Party, um, they, they're talking about their plan. However, uh, they fail to put forth that they actually had a majority in this House for many years. And for some reason, Madam Speaker, they did absolutely nothing to address uh, the fact that there's uh, underrepresentation across this country. So I was going to ask my colleague, uh, what does he think of that fact that the Liberals did absolutely nothing to address uh, the democratic deficit that we had in Canada for so many years, but then they voted for the $30 million taxpayer subsidy to keep that. So here they are, a party that won't vote for fair representation, but they voted to keep their taxpayer subsidy for the Liberal Party of Canada. Could he comment on that, please? The Honourable Minister of State. Madam Speaker, I just want to thank the Honourable Member for the question. Great question. And these are the questions Liberals should be asking their own colleagues. Right. I mean, rather than just uh, pitting one province against the other, you know, they should be working for all Canadians. A Liberal plan especially uh, would take away seats from provinces. Uh, that's not fair at all to the provinces. I mean, they are, uh, they are not working for the people of Canada. They're working for the Liberal Party of Canada. Uh, you know, they are working for the subsidies, not for the fair representation. I, I think, uh, uh, you know, that's what Liberals should be doing, working for the people of Canada, not for the Liberal Party of Canada. Yeah.